Today we're going to look at Genmo.ai and I teased it a little bit in our last video when we were looking at stable diffusion video and comparing its results with Genmo and Pika Labs. But Genmo is a really good tool. In the last video I featured the image to animation feature, but that's just one feature of Genmo. Let's take a look at it and then we'll dive into the others. Here's the interface. It looks a lot like many other interfaces we've seen. Along the left here we have videos, new Genmo replay. That's the feature we're looking at today. Animate is their legacy version. We're not even going to look at it. And then when you click on images, it actually takes you to Genmo Chat, which is this interesting way of iterating your way to a final image by having a conversation with a chatbot. We will check that out after we look at the video stuff. So what we did in the video yesterday was basically just drag an image onto the page, drop it, and then let Genmo decide what's in the image. And then we can take that base prompt that it creates and then tweak it if we want to. So it says, a couple of alien-like toys standing next to each other and they look enough like toys that's fine with me and then just click submit and it's going to go right to work on two different versions of it now you can change that in the settings it says right here batch one two or three and it, the default goes to two we'll look at these settings again in a second and you can see the progress up here in the upper left hand corner we're at about 80 percent with this one it doesn't look like there's much motion going on at all because you would be seeing the various frames we're looking here and see if there's any motion so we can see that there is some motion going on with the hands and it looks like the face is changing a bit. This one looks like it's done. So let's look at it from the beginning. So it is actually moving now, but there is no animation there except for that one little hiccup with the hands. Here's the final version of the other one. Also, again, very little movement. But then I was just looking at the prompt and it just basically says that they're standing next to each other. And that's accurate. So before we make any changes to the settings to get some different results, let's change the prompt itself. So instead of standing next to each other, how about if they're fighting in the pouring rain? And let's see what happens. Okay, so we can already see that that's making a huge difference. We've told it to do something and it's doing it. So look at that, that's interesting. Same thing over here. So yeah, this will make a big difference just with the prompt alone. All of these technologies are using AI, of course, to read what's going on in the image and then take action based on that and create an animation. So if there's really nothing going on in the image, what's the AI got to work with? So if we tell it now it's fighting in the pouring rain since they're actually just standing there, now it has something to work with. Now I don't see much pouring rain here, but that's a much more fun image. I don't see them fighting, right? But th there is some interesting movement there. Let's look at this one here. So it looks like they might be getting into a fight, but I really like that, right? That's much better, although there is no pouring rain. Why don't we use a different image? We're gonna upload this picture of a cat sleeping in a window and people walking a dog out on an empty street in a neighborhood. This is a cat sleeping in a bed on a windowsill. And I'm gonna say, with people walking their dog in the street. Now again, without touching the settings, I'm just gonna hit submit. Okay, I don't know what's going on here. We've added a cat. It looks like the people got hit by the car or swallowed by the car or it became a dog or the people became a dog. That's what's going on there. And this one, suddenly there's a freaking party in the neighborhood. We've got traffic going like crazy. Let's just let it finish. But uh, this is a little bit of mayhem. I'm gonna say we're getting, it looks to me like people and or animals are getting constantly hit by cars and vanishing. Well, I don't know, just a lot of stuff going on here. Yeah, that is not at all the, the effect. I mean, it's, look, at least nothing graphically terrible happens. The cat just sort of gets swallowed by the car. And then of course, now this cat in the window has a friend. Let's see what's happening to the cars. They're probably banging into each other. Well, we, we kind of cut away before they do. Boom, right at, the hit, right at the moment of impact, we cut away, ladies and gentlemen. So it's to spare you from the graphicness. We got some dogs over here, dogs here, maybe. Anyway, you get the idea. All right, let's drop in another image. So we got a man sitting in a rocking chair next to a giant spider. Here's the original image. We have lots of opportunity for motion. So let's just see what it does. But now we're gonna go see the settings. Now inside the settings, we have access to the ability to change the aspect ratio, change the duration, change how much of the original image is preserved, how much motion is applied, how many versions of the animation it will do, or whether or not we loop it. Well, 
Over here in camera motion, we have the ability to zoom in and out, and then we have the ability to roll the camera. So let's just choose zoom out XS, and let's choose roll to counterclockwise 25 degrees. We'll go to the settings. We will preserve the image, keep it around 72%, and motion will add a good bit. Submit. On this image here, we've got, a, it's again, it's too much. It's too much happening, too much changing. Now we've got a guy in the chair and the spider's coming down. <laughs> Let's just see. It still could be cool. Mm, I don't know. I think, actually, I think I'm coming around to how these are going. These are pretty interesting. I think what I'd like to do is run these again and use the loop feature and see how they turn this into a loop. Okay, so it's not like we got a bunch of this going on with the spider legs, but it's still an interesting animation. How about that? I'm sorry, I'm not... I'm not reading a book if that's hanging from my ceiling. I'm gonna find a bigger book. Now, while this is taking forever, let's take a look at these. If you'll see it says horror theme, fantasy theme, science fiction theme. These buttons pop up and if you mouse over them, it'll give you the prompt that it would replace. So it's looking at the image and going, how can I revise this image in this particular theme? So it turns a man sitting in a rocking chair next to a giant spider to man in rocker on porch, spider webs behind or old wizard with spider familiar at his feet that's the fantasy theme and then the science fiction theme man in post-apocalyptic world with mutated spider so here's our final animation here we've got a guy who's appeared in this rocking chair and this spider just hanging around i like this too it's just weird now we're going to take a step back in sort of technology and just do straight up text to animation or text to video so we just come up with an idea like maple syrup spilling onto the floor as a cat licks it up. I'm gonna to go to camera motion and I'm gonna choose auto for all of these and just see what it does. Click, click, click all the way down. Settings wise, I will keep it at 16.9. I'll let it go a full six seconds. The motion I'll put up to 68. I'm just ballparking here and I'm gonna loop it. Let's see what happens. We're beginning to get the render here. Maple syrup spilling onto the floor. The cat is already there. And here we go with another one. It doesn't look like it's spilling onto the floor. This one's done. And aside from the feet being in a sort of a strange position and there not really being any maple syrup down there, we do have a cat who's pretty coherent and clearly licking something up off the floor. Maybe that is all maple syrup. Maybe we came in way too late. It's actually a white floor and that's all maple syrup. And so it is licking it up and it nailed it. And you'll notice that it, it ended up being a 12 second video. So, and now this one up here, again, it's a little slower, but we've got that splash maybe in the maple syrup, but it's got that viscosity. So it's interesting. It's not spilling actively onto the floor, but it's on the floor and the cat is licking it. And so there you go. Pretty nice animation though. Let's look at this effects button here. Add a magical illusory effect to your video. And you'll see rings moving outward, rings moving inward, rings moving. Why don't we try something like whirl grow? We'll just leave everything at the default just to see what happens. And why don't we just change the prompt again? An ice sculpture of a dragon melting in the sun at sunset. Why not? Leaving everything just how it was, and the only thing I've added is that effect. I could be jumping the gun in a big way, but this doesn't look like... Well, I was about to say it doesn't look anything like a dragon ice sculpture, but it was clearly not done yet. So let me just stop talking until it's finished. I love what's going on down here with the colors. There's that one. Is it an ice sculpture of a dragon? Look at the detail though. If you really zoom in there, if you look at the details when it zooms out, look at the details we've got going on in here. If you really zoom in with the crystals, that's pretty impressive. Let's look at the next one. I don't know that it's like melting in the sun at sunset, but that's still pretty cool. I think maybe it's 12 seconds because we looped it. I thought another interesting thing to do would be to get a more complicated prompt from something that someone used mid-journey to create and see what happens if we animate it. Like this is an interesting prompt right here. Uh, mixed media textured painting of a sassy surreal old lady. I'm just gonna copy the prompt. I'm not gonna worry about negative prompt or anything. Just it couldn't be more crudely done. Paste this in here, get rid of all the mid-journey specific stuff and give her some action. So it's a textured painting of a sassy and surreal lady, full body dancing, having a great time. May as well let her have a great time. Oh, I completely forgot that we added the effects to that last one and that's why it looks like this and that is really cool. So again, that was the whirl grow effect on that video and that's why it looks like that. 
done. Okay, let's get back to our textured painting of a sassy and surreal old lady full body dancing and having a great time. We're starting that process right now. Oh no, I didn't mean to have her all world grow. Well, we'll let that happen, but then we're going to turn it off for the next time. And the good news is you don't have to wait till this is done. I can just go ahead and click submit and it's going to put it right back into the queue. So now we're going to get four versions of this sassy lady, hopefully full body dancing, having a great time. One with the effect, which is going to be weird, as we can see right here. And then one without, which hopefully will look interesting. But this is kind of looking interesting anyway. A mixed media textured painting. I now know that I cannot trust my instincts. These could turn out awesome at the end and we just need to be patient. Oh, look at that. We're peeking at the one without the effect. That looks pretty good. All right, let's peek down here. Half the fun is watching these things come together, right? You start this stuff and your brain just keeps going, ooh, what if this, what if this, what if this? So that's the one with the world grow effect applied to it. It's hard to tell if she's dancing or having her, although she is smiling. So I'm, we're gonna assume that she's having a great time. And then this one here, now we know she's having a great time. Look at that smile. So obviously this is happening because we use that effect. It is still cool, right? It's a cool animation and you do have lots of details going on in here. It's groovy, man. It looks like we only got one variation of the one that wasn't like that, but it still looks good. She's not going to, well, her hands are doing some jazz, that's for sure. Boy, that is jazz hands on steroids. But look at all the stuff around it. Hopefully you can see that detail on the video. It's really, it's textured. So confirming our suspicion, when you click loop, the times on all of these things double. Let's take a look at Genmo Chat. Now, it's not as unique a feature now that Dolly 3 is out and part of ChatGPT as it was before, because now you can kind of iterate an image through a conversation with Chat if it gives you a result and you don't like it, you can say change this and change that. And that's kind of what's happening here. So what do we want to create? Something amazing, okay? But it comes up with its own ideas. How about we generate an image of a futuristic city on another planet and then it tells you what it can do and then it starts doing it. But then you'll notice that it also goes on to say, hey, once we have the image, we could then animate parts of the scene or add movement to really bring it to life. How does that idea sound for something amazing? Let me know if you'd like me to generate the image or if you have any other suggestions. So there's our image. You'll notice that when you go to download the image, there's a license message that pops up that says upgrade to Turbo for a commercial license. So any of these images or animations you're creating are not available for commercial use unless you upgrade to Turbo, which is their paid offering. Yes, let's animate that image. That's all I'm doing. I said, okay, let's animate parts of that futuristic cityscape. How about we make the clouds move across the sky and have some floating islands drift gently? Okay, let me know if you like that. So it looks like it's doing it without me saying yes, do it. So there's the image. It's spinning over here in the corner doing something. Can we do something with a cozy interior theme? Certainly, we can create something with a cozy interior theme. How about a warm, inviting living room on a snowy night? Well, okay, so let's just see what it happens. And then it says, once we have that image, we can animate elements like the flickering fire or make curtains blow in the wind. So let's have it do that once this is done. All right, so there's our image. Here it is bigger. It's not maybe the greatest image ever, but it will do. Let's see if we can animate it like it said. Please animate this as you suggested. Let's see if it remembers what it suggested. You know, the snow and the flickering. It says, I'm out of fuel. Activate turbo mode to generate with 10 times more fuel every day and no watermarks. Well, I'm not going to do that right now. So I guess what it's telling me is that as I have done this demo with you, I've run out of fuel, at least to use this chat. But since I saved that image, I'm just going to paste it back in here into the video generation area and see what happens when I click submit. Apparently, I still have enough turbo to submit for the animation, but I can't get chat to do it. I'm realizing what I should have done was add those action elements to the prompt. So while this is going, and just in case it doesn't do it, let's add this in. Flickering fireplace snowstorm outside. And I'm just going to go ahead and just submit that while this other stuff is working in the background. So I let them all generate, and it's actually hard to tell just by looking at them which ones were the ones where I didn't have the prompt addition of flickering flames and snowstorm outside, because when you mouse over, it doesn't show enough of the prompt to tell you that. So if you want to see the full deal on any of these animations, you click on View. It'll open up another page where you can view the video. It's going to play over here, plus it will show you the entire prompt. So this is one where we said flickering flame and a snowstorm outside. Let's see what if we got 
anything going on. If you look, yes, there are. there's movement in the trees as if there's wind. It may be hard to tell where you are, but there's movement in the trees with wind. There are, the, the flames do have movement just about everywhere, even in the candles up here. So it did a pretty good job. So that's that one. This is one without the extra prompting. And it does still know to flicker the flame here, at least in the fireplace. Maybe a little bit of weather movement outside the window. The branches, very, very subtle though. So this is similar to the other one with the guy sitting there. This one does have the prompt addition. No real snowstorm outside. I was hoping for flakes and wind and stuff like that. Okay, and this is the other one without the prompt addition. We've got candles flickering here. We've got definitely a glow going in the fireplace. This is disturbing and again no real big snowstorm but enough trees movement to say yeah i know there's something going on outside so there's a basic overview of genmo if you have not played with it yet for your video generation needs give it a try they let you do a lot for free especially in the video generation part where you're using an image or text to video the chat obviously somewhat limited in how far you can go if you run out of what they call turbo so what do you think of genmo how do you think it compares with some of the big names out there like runway and pika labs and even stable diffusion video are you going to use it have you tried it do you have any tips that I didn't share. Love to hear about that in the comment. And if you're getting value from these videos, boy, it'd be really awesome of you to subscribe. What do you think?